not every day you hear, I do not have a Facebook page. Refreshing, perhaps, there's that indomitable American spirit surviving an onslaught of the latest thing that's popular just because everybody else is doing it, but more educators are coming to the conclusion that it's important for teachers to understand and utilize technology in their classroom. It's the way of the future. And many believe that's the case because young people love to talk, and they love to talk to each other and they love technology. So put it all together and you start to find that a whole list of interactive presentation tools and virtual learning environments have sprung up for use in the classroom. All you have to do is search online, do a quick tutorial, and before long you'll be making presentations like this one. Prezi is a presentation tool that is online. It's an alternative to PowerPoint and Keynote. Uh, the interesting thing about Prezi is that it doesn't work in a linear manner the way PowerPoint and Keynote do. Instead, they give you a canvas and you create um, a story on that canvas and then you can zoom the different areas of that canvas to do your presentation. I'm here today because I would like to share these tools with other teachers. I want them to experience the personal learning environment that I've experienced. Uh, I want them to be able to connect with other people. I want them to be able to connect with me. Uh, when, when that happens, uh, it really expands your skill set. It helps you grow as an individual, helps you grow as an educator. There's a big kind of a buzzword out there now called infographics, which is basically information but more in the form of a graphic or a poster. And how are kids going to be able to make these? So Glogster is one of the first free web-based tool that actually allows students to make infographics, which is really kind of a cool thing. Infographics are everywhere now on the internet, and it's just a great way for kids to learn about different areas of content that they want to study as well. Here's a great one about frog dissection. This page also has videos embedded into it. I think it's really about teaching responsible use of technology because it's exploding and we're moving towards that direction. Let's face it, students aren't going to be carrying around their textbooks that they have right now for the rest of their lives, but more than likely they're going to have some kind of mobile device at their, at their fingertips. And most of them right now think of mobile devices as in terms of, like, say, uh, entertainment, music, games, that sort of thing. So I take it upon myself to try and teach them that there are really, really useful skills that they can get out of this. Teach them how to validate content that's on the web so they can find the information that they need when they need it specifically. We do an activity called uh, Photabulary, which is a combination of photography and vocabulary. And we try and break down the sort of barriers that exist between vocabulary and the students learning. They, can, they know what the words mean, but they're used to looking up textbook definitions with somebody else's meaning behind them. So we have them use the internet to find images that relate to that particular term. And then using uh, an app called Type Drawing, they're able to add text on top of the drawing and that, that really will enhance the, the definition of that word much more so than just the words that are on the screen. So it really appeals to the visual learners and then also to um, you know the, the technological end of things. We do it as a shared activity where um, students will say maybe only define two or three terms and then we combine all those as one PDF that the whole class can share. So it's a, it's a really true collaborative experience. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm just wondering what Moodle is and how it could help me. Moodle is a free online resource. As an instructor at North Warren, I can use it to provide my students with study guides, PowerPoints, access a website, or look at a Word document. I can also create all these different assignments that are hands-on for the students to do outside of the classroom or even in the classroom. It's also a good way to keep track of your students, uh, pre-assess them, pre-test them, uh, post-test them. It's an opportunity for them to see everything that they've done throughout the year as well because you can have it open to the whole year or you can have it only open to one specific unit or chapter that you're working in. Today I'm presenting a workshop called Interactive Learning for Students with Special Needs. I'm going to be showing teachers how to take lessons that they do every day and incorporate them into Smart Notebook and to make it interactive for their students. It focuses all around using the Smart Board and how you can make your lessons interactive and interesting and engaging for students who have um, special needs. Have their morning writing activity. My presentation is about creating music videos. We're working on pronunciation, we're working on speaking, uh, we're working on writing. Let's say we take this song, I Love the Mountains. 
I love the mountains. It's five syllables. So I give them a line with five syllables, and they have to create a sentence in five syllables. I love the summer. I love the swimming.